The universe for billions of years has been lit by the fire of countless stars. In these stellar cauldrons, hydrogen nuclei are fused together to form helium nuclei, releasing energy that lights the heavens. Can we build the technology to harness this awesome energy on Earth? As we approach our planet, that is exactly what's happening today. Far beneath these clouds lies the National Ignition Facility, located at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in Livermore, California. This facility has been built to bring star power to Earth. It is the world's largest and highest energy laser system. Containing 192 laser beams, NIF will explore controlled nuclear fusion to ensure global security enable sustainable clean energy and advance our understanding of the universe. 85 feet tall, the laser and target area building is the size of three football fields. Inside are two parallel laser bays, each containing 96 beam lines. In this animation, which is millions of times slower than real time, we will follow the process for creating a miniature star in the target chamber by riding along with some of the laser beams. The process starts by first energizing the laser amplifiers in the two laser bays by dumping electrical energy stored in capacitors into flash lamps. They convert the energy to light that is absorbed by the laser glass in the amplifiers. Later, when the laser pulses pass through the glass, they will extract this energy, thereby increasing the laser beam energy. Our trip with the laser beams begins in the master oscillator room, where a very low energy laser pulse is created. This pulse is only 20 billionths of a second long in duration, which is a beam of light about 20 feet long. It's amplified and then split into 48 laser pulses, which are carried over to the two laser bays using fiber optic cables. Here, the 48 pulses are amplified in a pre-amplifier by a factor of about 10 billion. Then they're split into 192 pulses and sent into the main laser system. As we track eight of these beams through the facility, you can see the path of the beams highlighted in red. The first amplification occurs in the power amplifier. It has five glass slabs that were energized by the powerful flash lamps. Then they travel to the main laser cavity that directs the laser light back and forth four times through 11 sets of laser amplifier glass in the main amplifier system. This gives the laser beams another boost of energy. During this time, optical components ensure that the beams maintain their required pulse shape, quality, and spatial uniformity. On the final pass through the optical system, the laser light is allowed to exit and travel back through the beam lines and up to the power amplifier once more to pick up even more energy before heading down the long stretch to the switch yard. In total, the energy of the laser beams is increased a quadrillion times as they travel more than 1,500 meters from the master oscillator room to the target chamber. In the switch yard, the parallel bundles of beams are rearranged into a conical configuration. That's so they can be focused into the center of the target chamber and onto the target assembly. The assembly holds the spherical fuel pellet containing hydrogen. Here you see the eight beams split into two groups of four beams each, one group traveling up and the other traveling down, heading for equidistant entry ports on the target chamber. Finally, the beams pass through the final optics assemblies, which convert the original infrared laser light to ultraviolet. The beams then converge on the 10 millimeter target assembly called a hole rod, generating a bath of X-rays. This causes the tiny target sphere to implode and ignite in a controlled, self-sustaining fusion reaction. 
the same process that powers the stars. This will be the start of a new journey that will bring not only discovery and innovation, but a lasting legacy to the future.